you've been looking at oil recently. Let's get that well, chart been, up. Yeah, what? I mean, it's been it's been in the news because of uh, it's dipped under sixty dollars a barrel. Yep. Where's it going? Uh, I think it's got a choice of two here, Josh. The chart. Well, up or down? <laughs> well, it's going down. First yep. off, uh, we've got a fifteen and two hundred day moving average on the uh, on the oil, and uh, I've got a um, if I keep it simple here. I've got the uh, multi frame uh, inverse Fisher transformer of the RI of uh, the uh, relative strength, and that on a weekly basis tells me we are where the first vertical line comes in. We're on a long upward trend. But, right. Um, what we're doing is correcting. Um, we're correcting down to a, for either or, either going down to the triangle where it's bounced before, which is about 57, 57 and a bit dollars, or we're going sub 50 towards the 47 where the square is. Right. Um, those are the two that we're looking for, I'm certainly looking for, as, as the next support levels go. We don't know when, thing, when things fall, how far they actually go. And so we're looking, using the support lines where they've actually had meaningful uh, happenings before. In this particular case, the 47 level is, is one where we, we've, uh, we've had a, a bounce off twice before. And the, the 57 level is the, um, the, is, is the trend line, the, the red trend line, which is drawn up from the bottom there. But so yep. suppose you could say that it's furious joining points, but it's, if the, the idea behind this if the uh, charts bounced off this several times, then mysteriously it will happen again. So, yep. um, it so be if, very it, interesting to see. if it falls through 57 significantly, it's on its way to 47. To 47. If I it doesn't, then it's likely to bounce. I think you're looking to bounce. We're looking to buy in, that, in this zone somewhere here for, and, and looking for a bounce somewhere um, between 57 and 47, possibly. But um, uh, it should be very interesting to see. We, I mean, the thing is, with charting, actually, no one knows any, where anything is going to go. I mean, any share price is going to go. We think the probability of a bounce is, is high around those sort of levels, I would say. Okay. Well, if you're trading with probability on your side, that always helps, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's an uptrend mainly because of the, I say, the, the longer term trend uh, changed in April, and that's still intact. Uh, and as you can see on the left hand side, the trend, the trend changed uh, last uh, August. I mean, that belatedly at 112, you could say, well, we should go down to 130, but this is a longer term indicator that says, please, just please avoid, and you avoid this one 112. Uh, and that's after it, it, it going below the, the moving averages. It went below the 200 day around that time as well. So uh, that, this, is, this is okay. This is, so, so short term, it's, it's moderately upward tick, uh, but we expect correction towards those levels. Okay. Staying with the uh, sort of oil energy theme, we've got emerald yeah. energy. Um, talk us through this one. Well, this is interesting, guys. What I've done here is I've uh, mixed and matched here. There's a lot on. There's a lot on here. This is, we've got a volume long-term trend at the bottom, like for a starter, and that looks good. Look good from where the uh, vertical green line kicked in. And actually, the vertical green line is what we saw last, earlier. It's the inverse uh, Fisher transform of the RSI. That's that's actually telling us that the long-term trend is looking better for this one. So it really kicked into, into play really around 2009. But why, why different from any other share? Well, what actually caught my headline, the, the, the headline on this particular share was the profits news that came out on March the 17th, where the profits were six times higher, and the, the revenue flow was very, very good. And uh, this, this has been a good news flow stock, in my estimation, from, from there onwards. So, uh, this has actually caught the eye because of that. And this is this is mix and matching uh, uh, um, uh, the good news and a good chart. Right. So from that point onwards, that then interested me. Now, what I've done on the chart there is added arrows. And what do those arrows mean? That arrow, those arrows mean um, good short-term trend and high volume. We're looking higher than normal volume going in. So those little blue arrows, we're only going when there's a trend and uh, on the upside because it's difficult in the London market to measure volume are, are, are going up and going down. All volume is, is approximated. When a share price goes through the London Stock Exchange, it attributes, it, attributes it, uh, the, the, whether it's a buy or a sell to whether it's near the bid or the offer price. Right. There's no real, real exact uh, measurement of inflowing uh, volume uh, coming in and out. So um, this is where high volume has gone in and the share price has been rising and we've got long-term volume trend positive. All right, so we've got a good mix here. So when those arrows are going in there, and we've got trend accompanying it, um, longer term trend as well, um, this is a good sign. Okay. Um, so, um, so those are the points of buying, or potentially with excessive buying. And this is no surprise. The forecast of the brokers there have suggested that the price will go to eight quid, and it's had a bit of approach over the weekend, and this is now moving higher. It's about 6.30 on at the moment, 
and it might well go to, I reckon, £7 plus. Right. So I think even though bids coming in haven't been at a sparkling premium to the underlying at the moment, this has got good value behind it, and I think long term this is pretty good anyway. Okay, Bill, thank you very much for that. Let's move on to the next one, which is Dana Petroleum. And Dana's in the same sector. Now, this is a different approach um, to the chart aspect. And say so sometimes, well, sometimes uh, things go bought and oversold. And this is what I've done here is introduce a multi frame price oscillator to say, and this tells us that the shares was in too high against its 200 day moving average. And you notice that when it, the circle on the left hand side between the two parallel lines there is when we're 30% above the 200 day moving average. Right. And that's too much. To expect it to go too high, it's gone up too far too soon. Unless there's a bid coming right then, this share is going to be vulnerable to coming back. So you can go contrary. You can actually say, well, actually, I've made a bit of money on this share and, and sidestep it and get out. Uh, and get out where the red box is and somewhere in there. It's not an exact science here. Um, it's just a case of saying, well, this has risen a bit too high uh, and, and uh, you can get out. Now, the other side of the coin is to say, well, what wins it? and we're dealing here <clears throat> with a quality share. So quality share means to say we've got good earnings flow and this is, this is perceived to be persisting. So the underlying has not changed necessarily. Although the oil price has dropped back substantially, the underlying for this company has not changed dramatically. And this you could say, well, oil price dropping back has, but there's, there's, a, there's always a chance that the oil price is probably ever sold. It's probably, it, it, probably in exactly the same category as where this is going now. So um, in November, December time, the, where the hoop is there, we went 30% below the 200 day. Now this, as I say, works on the premise that we're, we're dealing with a quality situation which is going to recover. And if you believe it's going to recover, that is, that is where you would buy, look to be buying that share. And you could look at squinting your irons here, inverted head and shoulders or in there somewhere. So you, you'd be buying possibly at the seven, eight, nine pounds level, believing that this is a good long-term recovery. And it's done quite well since. Um, in fact, it's one of my favourite shares in the sector here because of the, uh, the asset backing and the, and the growth prospects and the cash flow is very, very strong. So if there's going to be further action in that sector, uh, and that's, we've already had Dragon Oil go, Venture Productions has a bit approach, and Emerald Energy has. You can see there's a bit of a correlation here that the oil shares um, are going, um, are, going to, are, are being bid for as the stakes rise in the, in, in the oil equation game. So this one here above 14 odd, 14, 20 odd, will be a chart breakout with a view to looking at 18 or 19 pounds. So this one is very, very interesting at the moment. Okay, Bill, thank you very much yeah. for that. And finally, let's have a look at um, ITL. What's that? Well, you've got two bits there, Giles. Is it the, the final part you want? The final um, part well, no, let's do, let's do both. Okay, well, the two parts of this, and this is the... Uh, um, this is, we're looking at support resistance, and this is one of the things that I think is most important. When we talked we talk before, the whole thing, what is the most important thing about a share is not where you lost money necessarily, or where the low point or the high point is, is where there's a meaningful support line, resistance line. And where those circles are on the uh, ITLSR chart, around the 46 pence level there, we have resistance, and it can't get through that level. Yeah, over one, two, three, four times here, five times, that this is a very, very meaningful point. And uh, we need to uh, take, take note of what actually happens when we break above that level. Now, it broke above that level in May 2008 and didn't, didn't, didn't uh, uh, go much further than, uh, than trouble that line again. And uh, it's, it hit, hit there again in September, didn't do anything with it, and again in April. But if we go to the next slide, Giles, you can see what happens then. And this is ITL up to date and you can see what happens there with the last two words there we had a we had a, a breakout gap now this is very very significant there are lots of gaps and lots of charts but where there's a when it breaks above a support and resistance line with a big candlestick as well and it happened to go with good news this was this was pretty explosive now the volume levels we haven't got on here we look at another time on here to see whether that supported it but uh, this is very very important uh, as a chart break and this is one of the or model charts that you're going to actually have. It's, it's sort of marrying up again uh, news flow and charts and support resistance levels. And it sort of makes a better, broader picture of what's going on. Now we're seeing with the, the, the ticks, the arrows coming in, uh, again, as we looked at earlier, we're seeing higher volume, um, higher volume with good trend. And that higher volume is going in now as the shares approaches new highs. Which, and and uh, this is now, a, a, well, this is used as a company with good growth prospects uh, uh, um, above expectations and uh, looks a reasonable prospect as and when it breaks again. So um, keep an eye on this one.